let's uh, let's pray father we as we come before your presence we give you glory Lord, we give you praise. We come with thanksgiving. Lord, we come with a song in our hearts. We come with a song in our lips, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. We lift your name above every other name, Lord. We lift you, your name, Father God, above every circumstance, Father God, that we might be facing, God. We lift the truth of your word, Lord, above every circumstance, above every challenge, above every difficulty. Lord, above every discomfort, Lord, we lift you the truth of what you have declared, Lord, we lift it above, God. We thank you. Come, Holy Spirit, have me. Holy Spirit, lead us. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray that you would um, lead us into all truth, Lord. And even as you lead us into all truth, Lord, let, the, let your truth dispel all lies. Let your truth, Lord, give light. Let your truth, Lord, um, even as it gives a revelation of who we are, of who you are, Lord, and the, and the true picture, Lord, of, uh, of everything that's going around us, Lord, your truth, Lord, we, um, we just want to, yeah, we just want to thank you for that, Lord, thank you for the truth that you bring, Lord, into our lives, Master, we thank you. We thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name right now. We bless your name right now. Yes, Lord. Dispel all darkness, dispel all lies, and dispel all deceptions. Um, yes, Father God, I pray for um, your shalom over each and every person, Lord. Uh, Lord, on the on the in the class right now, um, Lord, every student, Lord, everyone, Lord, your your shalom, oh Father God, because you said you will keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is, whose eyes are stayed on you, God. And so we we pray for that shalom, shalom. A perfect peace, God. Yes, in every aspect, Lord, your shalom. We thank you. We bless your name. We thank you that this is our portion. We thank you that uh, we are recipients of it. And uh, um, we just want to thank you that it is our inheritance to walk in this peace. We thank you. Let your peace rule and reign in our hearts, Lord. You rule and reign in our hearts, Lord, over every choice, over every imagination, Lord, over every desire, Lord, over everything that we want to do, every action, every motive of our heart, Lord. Lord, you rule and you reign, Lord. And to this end, Lord, we commit ourselves, Lord, into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so um, we'll continue discipleship in small groups uh, ministry, right? We, uh, I think last class, we looked at uh, uh, preparing the leader, right? We looked at if, uh, if there is a, you know, if there's a way to prepare for leading uh, a life group. Uh, or a small group ministry, a cell group ministry. Now, generally, you know, this would apply for uh, any uh, any any leader, any kind of um, you know leadership role. It would apply, uh, and specifically for any kind of leadership role in Christian ministry, uh, this would uh, this would apply, right? So we looked at uh, some of the things like um, um, preparing ourselves, um, you know, maintaining a strong personal walk you know, that was the first and the, the primary thing with the Lord right? uh, having a life that is uh, constantly consecrated right? and uh, consecration itself you know it, it means that uh, you set yourself apart for God and we know that it's not just a one time thing but it's a daily uh, daily every moment you know setting ourselves apart for the Lord. So uh, we looked at that, you know, constant uh, consecration. Then uh, another thing is if there were strongholds in our lives, uh, strongholds in our minds, strongholds which uh, interfere with with God's plans, with, uh, you know, we might have the best of motives, right? We, we, or we have desire, we want to live for God. But when we, when we step out and we, when we want to do this, you know, these, these strongholds pull us back. And so, uh, how we can get rid of that right, patterns uh, in our minds, which uh, prevent us from uh, walking in the path of righteousness, like uh, prevent us from taking a step for God. So these strongholds uh, need to be dealt with, uh, demonic strongholds to be brought down. And then we also looked at some, you know, if there is a, you know, 
place for uh, any hurt or bitterness then receiving emotional healing right from that okay and also knowing and maintaining our priorities because when it comes to small group ministry you're having people in home most of the you know uh, most locations the meetings would happen in a home and uh, most often in uh, whoever's hosting and leading the cell group right so we need to know our priorities my like personal walk with god is one family wife chill or spouse children you know that's a that's a priority so um you know uh, that cannot be they can't say you know i'm doing ministry so i neglect that right that's a responsibility that's god's design god has given us that responsibility um and so then maybe if you're working you know you know it's not a full time thing but then you're working you have a vocation you you're working in an organization you know your responsibility towards the organization right so we can't neglect that um so uh, it's going to affect your your you know if it's something's going to affect your work then it's going to affect everything else um so you can't neglect that then of course the work of ministry uh, which is uh, the small group ministry uh, being faithful to it and faithful in it so we need to know our priorities we need to maintain our priorities okay uh, that's the thing you know uh, like we said constant consecration you know, maintaining these priorities over a period of time and now that's um, that's the difficult thing that is something that we need to um that that we need to uh, you know focus on and pursue right okay so today we we'll look at um, uh, the heart of a leader okay uh, I, i think we we'll, we we kind of started off on it that how a leader is called to serve a leader is called to minister but it's not a self serving you know position and right? it's not something that um it's not something that serves our ego it's not something that results in you know it which elevates oneself okay so um the leadership style or the leadership uh, you know pattern that the lord jesus uh, set before us is that of a servant right one who serves others one who has the 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 betterment or the or the the best of others in mind so with that one leads okay it's not for my best you know or what will i get out of it but it's how can this benefit the people that i'm leading the people that i'm serving you know how can they they be brought to a place of uh place of advantage or place of benefit you know that's the um, that's the the role of a servant leader yeah, i'm just going to share the notes here and we'll uh, look at okay here we go okay so it's a it's a new life a new walk of servanthood um so avoid an inferiority or a superiority complex you know inferiority is like where you say you know i am nothing i'm worthless and uh, you know constantly comparing yourself to others and putting yourself down right looking at yourself and uh, saying that hey this is nothing i i, I am nothing you know i am uh, inferior and now that's uh, that is something which is which is wrong you know who you are or who we are in christ now that identity uh, needs to be strong in us right and not to make us arrogant not to make us proud but in our humility you know it's it's a it's a very um, it's a it's a very humble or humble uh, 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 humble posture of the heart because god made us sufficient god raised us up the lord jesus raised us up to a position to be seated with him in the heavenly places so you see that you know it's not something that it has been uh, it's not something that we performed and earned but the lord out of the goodness of his heart out of his grace has brought us to that place so understand that right and and be strong in it and uh, so that will actually take out all kinds of inferiority that you're not worth it that we're not qualified that we're not experienced and these are thoughts that come 
normally you know when when we take up uh, a position of leadership you know these are or these are questions that we might have right saying you know am i good enough am i qualified enough am i experienced enough um you know am i skilled enough all these thoughts you know will i do a good job uh, what if i fail um you know what if i fail others what if uh, others are not blessed all these kind of things avoid that because knowing that your identity is secure in christ you know it's not uh, education or lack of education it's not uh, financial uh, position or lack of it it's not family background or lack of it it's not experience or lack of it it's not that the one who qualifies us to be a servant leader is the lord jesus so there's no place for inferiority the second thing is the other end the opposite of that which is superiority saying oh i'm a leader i've been appointed as a leader and i must be something someone special right i must be someone who is is great i must be someone who's fantastic so everybody is looking up to me so that's another danger right saying oh now you better listen to what i have to say because i'm a leader i'm leading you right so a, a place of superiority when we say superiority you know again it's not the correct um a way a posture of the heart right it's not the right way of evaluating oneself right um where we are not strong in our identity in christ and then that's uh, led us to a place of superiority right so we are saying everybody else you know you listen to me everybody is uh, uh, less than me and i am you know uh, bigger better stronger you know more experience uh, you know uh, more spiritual i pray longer right all that and saying i am superior you know that also has to be avoided right um we see that john chapter 13 talks about you know the last supper and what the lord jesus did in uh, in you know in washing the disciples feet and he set that as an example right he said do unto others right the servant is not uh, i just want to read from the last few verses right the lord jesus said for i have given you an example that you should do as i have done to you that is verse 15 the servant is not greater than his lord neither he that is sent greater than he who sends him no he know these things happy are you if you do them right so it's um, it's something that the lord uh, taught and he expects us to follow it right uh, to be servant leader it's not an option no that's what i wanted to share you know to be a servant leader to be a leader who serves is not an option for the believer option means okay i can either choose to do that or not to do that okay so whoever is called or placed in a you know in a in a place of let's say spiritual leadership the only way to lead is to serve okay um we need to understand it's not an option it's it's what the lord expects this is how he wants us to lead okay so if we have that heart okay and also to serve in the right way you know it's not saying that okay uh we need to understand our responsibility as a leader okay what is my responsibility what is my role um which means that i can do some things i should not do certain other things right uh, if my uh, place of uh, leadership um you know requires me to let's say you know prepare it requires me to be firm it requires me to be you know speaking the truth in love all that is you know the right way you know sometimes we think okay as a servant leader that means that i should listen to everything that the people are telling me and i should say yes to all that the people are saying or i should say yes to all that people want me to do no that's not servant leader that's that's an abuse of leadership right so that's not uh, that's not you know uh, or, or even saying you know i'm uh, uh, y- yes to everything of people's expectations that is not servant leadership right so we need to have a healthy wholesome a uh, correct picture of what a servant leader is and then you know, go ahead and do it right okay um so the other thing uh, is to you know here are here are some things to avoid right three temptations 
Okay, now this is from uh, John Maxwell's book, Million Leaders Mandate. Um, three temptations to avoid. What is it? To be self-sufficient, okay, self-reliant. Now that's a that's a strong pull for some of us. Right? Saying, okay, you know, I have the skill, I have the ability, so I rely on myself, my resources, my abilities to carry out ministry. Okay, so that's a strong song. Sometimes a temptation. The thing is, the danger in that is that we do not rely on the Lord. We are not dependent on the Lord. Okay, only when there's a crisis we go to the Lord. We are not dependent on Him. We're not. We're not. We're not drawing wisdom uh, from Him. We're not. You know. We're not dependent on Him. We're not drawing, or uh, even you know, uh, uh, revelation and understanding. We're not receiving from Him. We're not receiving anything. Just completely, you know, because we're so self-reliant, saying that I can do it. Um, we. We literally close the door right, to receive from the Lord. Right? Now that's a danger. Okay. Uh, secondly, even with people, right, with God, with people, um, the Lord, we know that the Lord has actually placed us uh, in the spiritual body, which means people are also there to, you know, there are others who bring wisdom, there are others who bring help in times of need, whether you're a leader or not. So as a leader, the temptation is, you know, I, I'm, when, when you're self-reliant, when you're uh, tempted to be self-reliant, to, to really shun the efforts of people. You know, maybe God brings wisdom through people, we, we close the door. Maybe God brings the right help that we need uh, through people, but we close the door because we are self-reliant and we, you know, we don't want to receive anything, right? Okay, second one, to be spectacular. Now that's a celebrity mentality. Meaning, whatever I do, it should be, it should be, you know, it should be spectacular. It should be like full of, uh, you know, how should I say it? You know, lights and smoke and all that. Um, well, we can be ex excellent in what we do. We can be good at it, you know, really good at it. But it need not, you know, if the situation calls for it, if the, um, you know, if the occasion requires it, but we can. You know, do what needs to be done without drawing attention and focus on ourselves. Because to be spectacular, you know, the, that kind of mentality is that, okay, to elevate oneself, right? The focus is on uh, us. Now, without doing that, we can still do a good job, right? Uh, and the other temptation is to be powerful, to be in charge all the time, right? And it's the opposite of being vulnerable opposite of being um, uh, of being uh, humble even right opposite of being in a position of wanting help or receiving help or receiving um, anything from the Lord right to be powerful to be in charge all the time to be controlling all the time right okay so Christ like servant leaders are motivated by love, and uh, it, they also possess a security. They are secure, which allows them to minister. Right. So this, sec when we say security, you know, that's that's the thing, that they are secure on the inside, um, with regard to identity, with regard to, you know, their qualification. Why are they qualified? I'm sorry. Why are they qualified? It's by the grace of God. Um, nothing else. It's by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. It's by it's, it's through the Word of God, right? So, so God calls the most. You know, it's surprising. You know, His call is God calls the most. Um, um, you know, the, uh, the the most inexperienced sometimes. You know, the most uh, um, uh, the people that whom we think. Are not qualified or not, um, God has a way of surprising us, right? So we need to be secure in ourselves in Christ, right? So only then can we uh, take up, you know, big things. And when we have the, uh, you know, when we are secure in Christ, um, in who we are, 
in who God God has called us to be, then we will also, you know, um, not hesitate to do the small things. So it's not only the big things. Maybe we we need to do the small things, right? Simple things, the menial things, menial tasks, right? So we will not hesitate to do that. Okay. Um, well, uh, the the ones who are servant leaders, Christ-like leaders, they <coughs> instill or initiate the same kind of ministry to others. Receive servant ministry. They teach servanthood. Right? Okay. So here's something helpful to help us uh, keep examine our heart attitude. Okay. To examine our heart attitude. Let's look at a few of them. Our attitude as we begin a task will affect its outcome more than anything else. Our attitude towards, a, let's say, towards a task, towards a project, towards a, uh, towards an outreach, towards a meeting, right? You know, if we if we start by saying, okay, oh, another cell group meeting. Uh, what is going to happen? All these people are coming and taking my time away. I wish I could relax. Now, if that is how the, how the our attitude is going to be, then it will affect the way we minister. It will affect the way we, you know, way the whole meeting goes. Right. On the other hand, if you're going to say, "Hey, yes, a wonderful opportunity. Yes, I'm tired, but I'm going to ask the Lord to refresh me, to strengthen me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be consistent." And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go with the expectation that God will move in the hearts of people. Well, I sometimes I may not see it immediately, but I know I'm standing in faith and the Lord will move in the hearts of people. Now move in my heart and, uh, you know, that it's going to be a glorious time in the purpose and the will of God. I'm doing this. I'm called to do this. I'm doing this. Right? So that's a different attitude. It's a faithful attitude. Right, so it's going to change the very outcome of that meeting. Right? It's going to be, it's going to be very, very different. Right? Okay. Then attitude towards others, very important. And first, first of all, we looked at you know our attitude towards the task, but what about our attitude towards other people? Now that will determine their attitude towards me as well. Right? If I have the right attitude, if I if I look at them as uh, you know as people created in the image of God, and if I see them as people who are you know who are precious to God, who are actually the flock of God, I need to be accountable to God for their you know for their lives, what I do with them, what I teach them. Then my attitude towards the people will be different. But if I'm just going to look at them. As you know, people who come as okay, yet another, you know, here's another statistic, okay, as another number, as another, you know, something that feeds my ego. Okay, so many people attended, or so many people, you know. If I'm going to look at it only as as that, as people as commodities, people as you know, very different from people being someone precious to God, then their attitude towards me also is going to be different. Okay. So people will understand that hey, they are being they are not being valued. They are not being treated right. Okay. So that their attitude changes. Okay. And attitude is a major difference between success and failure. So we know that. Attitude can turn our problems into blessings. You know, when we have challenges, when we have problems, uh, our attitude as to how we face those mountains and right? how we face those um, problems, you know, do we face it as, you know, face them as something to be overcome? Like right? the problems, do we, do we face them as, okay, here's something that I need to solve, right? And, uh, well, I have the wisdom of God, infinite wisdom, which is in God. And because I'm, I'm one spirit with him, I have, you know, the ability to receive. Now that, attitude will actually turn that problem itself the challenge itself into a into a blessing it into maybe opportunities to serve right um especially you know people who are problematic right people who create problems now uh, and how do you face that 
how do you face that situation how do you face them right so all that our attitude will determine whether it can turn out to be a blessing or continue to be a problem right okay uh, uncommon perspective on life uh, attitude can be our best friend or our worst enemy uh, attitude Uh, will you know give us bring us to a place of happiness and contentment uh, and not our success you know we can be very successful we can do the things we can achieve a lot of things and still not be happy still not be content right whereas our attitude in the midst of circumstances and problems and challenges our attitude will actually bring us or keep us in a place of you know, peace in a place of being happy in a place of being content right um, our attitude would need adjustment and alignment and this is again something that's continual something that we need to check check our heart and say okay what is my attitude towards this people what is my attitude today you know what is my motive today and if it's not right we need to adjust we need to make that correction okay it will help us it will go a long way because it is very very impactful okay and our attitude is contagious what does contagious mean it means it spreads right uh, if we are cheerful and energetic and uh, you know um, and uh, you you are so positive uh, full of faith that will spread in the sense the other person or the people with whom we are interacting will also want to be that okay this attitude will impact them influence them to have the same thing so if you look at the other side you know if it's a negative attitude that is also contagious now that's the danger right so so check yourself um, like somebody said you no know, check yourself before you wreck wreck yourself um wreck meaning to totally destroy you know so check it before you wreck it so um check your attitude right, before you destruct or self destruct okay so here are, uh, you know we're looking at uh, things that uh, as leaders uh, we need to prepare ourselves we need to watch out okay um you know, the next thing is that uh, be a dreamer in the sense you know when we say dream or vision we know that it can be a supernatural thing where god gives us uh, by the by his spirit he gives us a dream he gives us a vision but when we say be a dreamer we are also talking about you know uh, think big right uh, think of carrying out things that are possible right possibilities uh, think about finishing well think about you know accomplishing the purposes of god right so that is what we say when we say be a dreamer you know uh, don't restrict yourself don't limit yourself you know many times we limit our dreams or minute, limit our visions because because of what we see in the present right today how are things today where am i living today what are the resources and we say okay maybe i can't think i should not think big because this is what i have and this is where i am uh, right these are i see are as my restrictions as my limitations right so we restrict our lives our actions or what we need to do based on whatever we whatever we see here and now but what if we put that aside and say okay god in you i'm i can do because you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that i ask or think in me well i can do i can be all that you want me to be i can do exceedingly abundantly because great is the work of your spirit the great is your power that is at work in me right and then we begin to think like the lord would think look at you know situations look at opportunities the way god would see the way the lord would see and and then step forward into it right okay so be a dreamer uh you know these are some gentle things you know, to be totally committed okay um to be committed do it doing it with all our hearts you know colossians 3 um 
talks about you know whatever you want to do do it as unto the lord okay um and uh, Ephesians also we see that you know, that we should not be i pleasers or men pleasers okay? not just i service but you know be committed and commitment be wholehearted in doing things right it could be small things you know uh, especially you know these small things um really test our commitment right so be fully committed even those small things and uh, and then we will see the outcome of it right okay be positive which means that you think of possibilities you think of you know be, being positive means that you are a person of faith right you are being positive about things you are saying that okay this these things will happen because god has said so right and so therefore i'm going to live uh, because live and act and move in line with that right? i'm not going to be a negative person right? a negative person would always say you know it cannot be done or i cannot do it and think of maybe 10 ways why it cannot be done whereas a positive person would look at um the same situation right the same problem and look at maybe 10 and come up with 10 things and things why it it can be done okay. so now being positive does not mean that you are not realistic okay. sometimes that you know people have that idea you not know, to be positive means i should not be realistic no we should be realistic we should see that okay hey, this is you know this, there are limitations there are problems there are challenges okay but being positive is looking beyond that and saying what are the solutions right what are the resources what are the solutions you know how can i overcome that is being positive right okay like we see in first samuel 30 in verse 6 um david encouraged himself in the lord his god okay actually it says but david okay which means that uh before that word you know before that word but it talks about a situation which is which is bad okay verse 3 if you see the king they come to the city it is burnt with fire all the family members are taken as captives right so they literally they 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 saw that and then they cried and it says in verse 4 until they had no more power to weep you know they they so weak that they could not even cry right completely drained physically emotionally um so everybody has been taken captive family has been taken captive and they are all grieved but it says in verse 6 but david encouraged himself in the lord his god now he says but david encouraged himself now that now that's the thing so reality is this reality of the circumstance is this but david encouraged himself now that's a positive person right that's a person who is uh, looking at possibilities that's a person who's looking at looking through eyes of faith okay it's not a it's not an escapist right not someone with an escapist mentality but someone who's real someone who's realistic but david encouraged himself in the lord okay 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 so as a leader what are some areas that i can grow as a leader in leadership what are some areas that i can grow in it's very important right so one of one area is competence okay because it's it's actually four c's you know, competence confidence compassion collaboration okay uh, it's again you know adapted and taken from the book million leaders mandate by john c maxwell right okay so let's let's look at that so what is the first one compete co- competence competence which means uh, uh, ability okay or skill or ability okay so 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 as a leader so you know it is our responsibility to continually grow 
to continually improve. Okay, no one can do it for us, but we need to do it ourselves, you know. So, so there's no place where we come and we come to a, you know, we come to a stage where we are, where we say, okay, I'll stop growing or I'll stop learning. Okay, now that's a, that's a big mistake, right? Then we, when we, then we stop being people of influence, actually, when we come to that place. So, so we, we don't, you know, we don't come to that place of uh, stopping or, you know, uh, in our, in our learning, in our growing, right? there's always, we are always growing. So what are some areas to grow in? What are some areas to continually develop in? Okay. Um, first one is competence. Competence is, you know, we can look at knowledge, okay. Um, what we learn, okay. Maybe, uh, you know, if it's a church ministry, again, learning, okay, how, can not, and learning can be you know several areas right we we learn okay uh, uh, from the word of god and we we learn about the lord we learn what the lord has to say we 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 learn okay we grow in our uh, knowledge and and scripture exhorts us you know continually grow 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 in the knowledge of the lord don't stay in that same place um uh, let me just look at uh, um, the scripture, yeah. Um, if you look at Second Peter and chapter three, okay, Second Peter chapter three, uh, verse eighteen, the last verse, okay, second last verse in Second Peter, actually, Second Peter chapter three, it says, "But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and forever." So, growing in knowledge okay. knowing growing in knowledge of uh, of our lord and savior okay so which means everything you know he he is the eternal word so growing in knowledge of the word growing in our understanding of it right growing in knowledge of you know, what we are supposed to do knowledge of ministry how to minister how to you know so you continually growing in that how can i be even more effective um you know knowledge of other things as well here specifically of course peter is exhorting the believer to grow in the knowledge of the lord jesus in the grace of the lord jesus right so growing in knowledge it's it is scriptural to grow okay so what you learn skill is what you can do you know skill being skillful uh, maybe you know we uh, maybe it's a skill that it's, it's something that you do right um, some new skill that you learn um, to do certain things, right? To to be able to, you know, like even simple things, right? Um, like for example, I just always look back, and when I when I joined this company, the, the company that I worked with, the first company that I uh, worked with, organization that I worked with, then you know, even simple things like I didn't know how to send. You no, know, those days we had this fax machine, right? You had to put in a pay, you know, a printed sheet, and then you send it. These were I mean, email was of course there, but it was it was not very common, right? Uh, none of us used email. Uh, we we actually wrote down stuff and we sent it by courier, so it'll reach the next day the other office. Uh, of course, we used phones, but you know this fax. If you need to send an important document, so you put it in the fax machine and then it comes out in their fax machine, and uh, it's like a photocopy of it, but then you know, it's an, it's there, right? Uh, it's again a hard copy. So, you know, I, I didn't know how to send it, right? Before I joined the organization. So in the organization, I had to learn to send it, learn to use the phone, learn to use the, you know, the, the, the telephone, learn to use to how, how can I pass on this you know, the uh, call lands here, yeah. you, you pass it on. So these are all skills, right? Learning to use the, uh, you know, your computer, learning to use, um, you know, how to, how do I make a PowerPoint presentation? How do I use a spreadsheet? Like these are skills. And these are skills that all of us, we can learn. Okay? And these are skills, you know, these are some of the, I'm just using it as an example, but the skill to lead a cell group. Okay? Specifically, we are talking about uh, cell group ministry, right? And as a leader, you know, how can I lead a cell group? 
you know, uh, how can I lead um, uh, the skill to facilitate? Right? I'm tempted to talk all the time. I'm tempted to preach, but how can I facilitate a discussion? Right? These are skills. So this, these are things that we can learn, so we can grow in. Okay. So when we say competence, we're talking about knowledge, we're talking about skill. And thirdly, thirdly, also about experience. Okay. Our experience. So when we when we do something, what we learn from that, that's our experience. Right. So we can either evaluate that experience, reflect on that experience, and continue to learn and continue to grow in that learning because all of us have experiences, you know, experiences. It's, it's like one river, which just flows every day. You know, there are multiple things that we are experiencing right from sunrise to sundown, right? A lot of things we go through, we meet people, we experience just happens. But when we evaluate and reflect on what has happened or what is happening, um, then we learn from it then we grow in it, right? So growing in competence, very important. So we look at these three elements in competence, knowledge and skill and experience, and what we can actually take out of it and grow in it, okay? Um, the second thing is confidence, okay? So when we say confidence, it means, you know, uh, let me just pull out the uh, word for it one second, just a minute. Um, so confidence when we you know sometimes we think it's a very un unspiritual thing right uh, sometimes it's been wrongly understood as arrogance or pride okay um, but actually if you, if you look at the meaning of confidence you know one, one way to you know, let me just put it in the chat it means feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on someone or something, you know, have confidence in you, I have confidence in this, I have confidence uh, in, in, in myself that I can do this. So this confidence in ourselves is uh, sometimes, uh, you know, misinterpreted as self-reliance or arrogance. Okay? Um, it is not. It is actually simply, you know, if you are a person of faith, you, know, you need to have confidence, right? And this confidence is, is who you, God has made you to be, what he has given you, the abilities that he's given you, you know, to be confident in that, right? who you are in Christ, what you have received because of who you are in Christ, what you have, you and I have become because of who we are in Christ. Now, that should give us confidence to face things boldly, right? When we have faith in God, when we have faith in his word, um, that should give us confidence, right? So, so that's the thing, right? So it's, it's like reliance. It's, um, it's having faith and trust in something, right? So it's not, it, it means it's confidence brings us to a place of courage. Okay. So you're not afraid. You're not afraid of the outcome. Right, whether it's even if it's failure, you're not afraid. So when we the thing is when when we don't have confidence, we won't uh, we'll fear the outcome. Okay, what if this happens? So I will not do it. Right? What if um, no one comes? So I will not do it. Right, I will not have this meeting. I will not you know venture into this. What if this happens? Therefore, I I will not step into it. So. You know, we, because of lack of confidence, we miss out on so many opportunities. You know, it's, it's the opposite of being courageous, being fearful even, right? So competent, uh, confidence is very, very important for, for a leader. Right? Um, and we need, we, we need to, you know, we can be confident despite all these, you know, emotions of fear and so on. Which we, you know, sometimes happens, right? We just we need to we need to do certain things. Okay, despite this, okay, I'm I'm feeling a little bit, you know, I'm feeling all this emotions of fear, but but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Right? Um, so that 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 is that will help us 
to build confidence that will help us to overcome um, lack of courage and, uh, and all right okay so confidence comes from positive experiences so that is true you know when we have some victories when we've done certain things despite our fears and then we realize hey it wasn't so bad it wasn't as bad as i expected as i thought it would be you know um, i remember once when our daughter was very small uh, we took her to get a you know a, a shot no injection um, I, i forget which one but um, it was i think one of the last of those injections that you normally you know give children uh, those booster doses and uh, you know, those initial vaccinations and all that so it was the last of that so i don't know she was quite um, you know she was quite um, she's not uh, you know she's not really grown up but then she was she was not a teenager or anything but she was still you know maybe 5 four five but uh, the thing is that she is so scared about the about the injection you know she thought it will be very painful she saw the syringe and and the, and the and the you know the medical person just bringing the syringe and placing it she thought oh sorry this was not a vaccination this was a blood test we had to get a blood test for school school said okay we need to get this done so it was a blood test so the injection and you know the syringe and the, the blood need to be taken and she was like so so afraid and so she started she even before the injection could touch her skin she was you know the needle could touch her she was she was crying loudly when when I, when the needle actually poked and then she realized hey it's not that painful actually she stopped crying she was crying before and but then when the when it actually happened she said oh that's not so bad that's not as painful as i thought you know many times that's the thing right with with regard to our confidence you know lack of confidence you know we fear something and then we and then we don't you know we, we hesitate but then we realize okay let me do it and then we you know after going ahead in confidence we realize oh that was not so bad as i thought right so these experiences these small victories build our confidence right when we and to and to go over and do it um it requires courage right and when we when we do that despite all kinds of fear and all kinds of uh, you know challenges when we do it that those small victories or those positive outcomes build our confidence okay um okay so let's uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll take a break now it's on 950 yeah we'll take a break we'll come back and we'll continue right thank you